And with that, I would like to invite Competent Communicator Shah Khatija to evaluate Toastmaster Moy for his project number four. Saturday back in people. So thank you for that story. 
I did feel that it was a bit repetitive though. Because we know the story was on your grandmother, but you went, my grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother. So try to omit that a little bit and speak more about her. I will end with this, that it is always an advantage for you to speak of a personal story because that story belongs to you alone and so it kept us on edge. We wanted to know more and what's going to come next. So that was a good move. Thank you very much. We will now move on to speech evaluation for speaker number two. With that, I would like to invite computer communicator Jason Chiu to evaluate Toastmaster Ken Wei for his project number seven. Toastmasters can wait. Now, does anyone here, is anyone here familiar with the sitcom Two and a Half Men? Yes. Yeah. I just have to mention that when I first saw Ken Wei's topic, the theme song from Two and a Half Men just came to my head. <laughs> and can wait. Now, whatever I'm going to tell you is just my opinion alone, yeah? So please bear that in mind. Now for project number eight. Yeah, yeah, sorry, project number seven. Research your topic. Now it says here that the speaker is to select a subject of importance to the audience that requires a large, large amount of research. A subject which is of importance to the audience. We chose men, which is a very broad topic. <laughs> Whether it's importance, whether it has importance to the audience or not is debatable. <laughs> However, it also says here that it requires a large amount of research. And I I found that that was a bit lacking. Yeah, the, the part of research. You could have done better in that area, yeah. So the speaker is to collect information from num numerous sources and carefully support points with specific facts, examples, and illustrations, rather than with just the speaker's own opinions. Now, I found that the facts that you gave to us, that you presented to us, although it was very interesting, very humorous, very funny, but it reflected more on your own opinion, and they they, um, they seem to have, it, it came off as very general statements, yeah? Very general statements. The other thing about your speech is that the purpose, I struggled to find the purpose of your speech. Yes, you did tell us a lot of um, interesting facts, but what is the purpose of your speech? I think that has to be clearly defined from the beginning. Now, what I like about your speech, what I like about your speech is that you did inject, I mean, like I said, a good dose of humor in your speech. You got everyone engaged and interested. And your use of audience engagement, you, you did very well in that area. You managed to engage with the audience, asking questions, you know, asking questions and so on. And I'm not sure whether it's because I'm your director, but you kept on looking at me <laughs> when, when you asked those questions. In conclusion, in conclusion, this is project number seven. Therefore, I feel that you could have done better in terms of uh, research. For example, the, the facts that you quoted, right? Like the man who married the dog in India. If only you could have supported that with, it, with even a picture, that would help a lot. It would enhance your speech a lot. And the other fact that you mentioned was about uh, men actually spend one year looking at women, right, in their lifetime. I'm not, I'm not denying that fact, but <laughs> but if you could support that speech with some facts, yeah, that would be better. So well, overall, well done, well done, and all the best for next week. Jason, I think this time around the evaluators are really feeling the clinch or the pinch because we are being timed that we're being clapped off the stage. <laughs> it's it's indeed a very stressful period. Now Jason is right about it being personal opinions of uh, evaluators. 
but I totally concur with his viewpoints today. Ken, you were very humorous as usual. If it was humor that you wanted, that was your purpose and objective, then you have definitely attained it. However, again, I will mention that there was not enough references to research your sources. It was mainly examples. Now, examples were true, could be true, could be not true. A lot of the women may not uh, support it, but it was a vigorous speech nonetheless, very entertaining, so thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now move on to the third evaluation, which will be by Advanced Communicator Silver, Advanced Leader Bronze, Ken Ko, to evaluate, oh my gosh, Advanced Communicator <laughs> Bronze, Computer Leader, Michael Wong, with his Advanced Project number two. Toastmaster Michael Wong, my very old friend, or the first person I know in Real Toastmaster Club, I'm going to be very honest and very humble to you. In terms of your strength in this project, let's get personal. Delivery-wise, very good. Your specs purposely put on top. I'm not saying what you call that, it's something I'm ribbon. Handbag. Handbag, and also the handphone purpose take it out. You're displaying yourself as like a woman. You're very good in all these things. Delivery-wise, dialogue. Good body positioning, the way you display the men and women so we can easily differentiate it. They are vo your vocal control, when you're the women, your voice will totally change the way to be very uh, high. When you're men, your voice is very low, you can easily identify it. Now, this project number two, let's get personal. Two objectives here, you're about to tell an element of a good story. And the second one, I want to highly emphasize this. You're going to tell a personal story based on originality. Now, when you deliver it, I was a lot of question mark or confusion inside my head. Are you a man or woman? Or are you trying to portray someone else? Because the way you did, even though you try to portray like a woman, but the way your dialogue, your conversation, you try to say that you're like a woman, just like kind of create a fake impression already towards the audience. So I will know that this is not a personal experience. Secondly, in terms of speech development, now, good story, they don't go by numbers. They go no one, two, three. But you go this way, like, okay, the second thing is women, they are much more angry or jealous of each other. So you kind of have put like a point system. The speech, de your story development is not as smooth anymore. So it's better yet, you do it like a, in a classic or plot structure. Exposition, climax, twist, then the closing there. So we can easily follow it. Instead of doing a point form. More personal experience is is all of us must know that it's not a fake one. The way you do it is like, hmm, there's like a bit not true in this statement. So I want to see like more true story from you, such that do you have like your first date or how was your first experience of it? Then there must be a climax to twist of it, must be a very excited part. Doesn't matter that the story end up in a very nice or tragic way, but the climax is that like the conclusion of people are already wanted to have the most memorable part. So that is something I want to see from you, Michael Wong. Lastly, my personal suggestion after five years in Toastmasters, my very good old friend Michael Wong, I know a lot of people are seeing me today, please re, not say redo it, I'm trying to rephrase it in a very nice way. Plan it, craft it again, your own personal experience, originality. You have a very good delivery style. I want to see much more Michael Wong style, share Michael Wong's story, so we can get personal to know that this is not a fake story. You can do it, Michael Wong. Please listen to my advice. We do it for future purpose. Try to share Toastmasters' value integrity instead of we just do it just for the sake of it. So let's get personal. Share your own personal story. Thank you. Thank you, Ken Ko, for that very honest, direct evaluation. We expect no less due to your experience in Toastmasters and you have all the qualifications to go that way. Now, if we have had a, an in-house evaluator, we may have been less direct. I'm quite sure of it because colleagues being colleagues. So Michael, that was very strong points that you have to take note of and I'm sure you will take it with a pinch of salt and, and that you'll do even better for your next project. Now let me say a little bit about your project. 
it was very dangerous grounds that you were trying <laughs> Women are very sensitive animals. <laughs> I did notice one thing that you mentioned. You said three colors, and then you went on to say anger, jealousy, and frustration. These are not colors. So that was one point that I caught. Unless you call it red for anger, green for jealousy or envy, or something else to that extent. As usual, you do have your vigorous body gestures and all that, but thank God, no female colleagues here act like that. <laughs> so thank you very much, speaker number three, evaluator number three. We will now move on to project speech evaluation number four, which is none other than our president, Seki, who will be evaluating computer communicator Sharon with your advanced project speech number two. Ladies and gentlemen, from, <coughs> from the moment Sharon uttered the first word, she kept us captivated with her vigorous movements, with her overly dramatized situations, explaining to us what was happening, and filled with enthusiasm and excitement. You felt like you were part of that particular situation itself. The many stories that she told within that 15-minute speech gave us a lot to think about. Ladies and gentlemen, when Sharon spoke, did we all relate to it? We did, because everyone, even our area director is filming me now with that <laughs> camera and also taking a picture with his phone. Why is all this for? YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the social media platforms. And she started off with that. And as she progressed and she went on, she became more and more relatable on a human level. And that brought the whole story to the moral of it. And that is something to learn, that we are not to be governed by machines. All these gadgets are here to support us, but don't make it a part, so much a part of our lives that we cannot live without it. As I say this, I know I'm hypocritical because I can't live without my phone as well. But as an advanced speaker, there are certain things that you can improve on. And I only have two points. The first being, when you spoke with so much energy, there were also times when you actually tried to relate to us on a more solemn and lower enthusiasm. At that point in time, your energy was also still kept at a high. Perhaps if you soften a little bit and lower down your voice or your tone in terms of your pitch as well as your, your, as your speed, it would have been better. And the next thing, when you started off with the taking a selfie for yourself and everything, it would have been nice to get a bit of crowd engagement, perhaps move on to Michael and really take a selfie together because in the Olympics in London, Rowan Atkinson, he was doing the Olympic song, The Chariots of Fire. He was only playing that keyboard. And while he was playing the keyboard, he actually took a picture of himself and uploaded onto his Twitter and Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. So he did that live. And that, when everyone who follows him actually could see that feed at that this is happening at that whole moment. So perhaps something to learn from that. If you're doing that, and you will get sporting people who will do it with you. All in all, it was a great speech that I have learned a lot about. 15 to 20 minutes is no big joke, ladies and gentlemen. The fact that she can come up here and speak non-stop with full of vigor and enthusiasm shows that you are already on your path to be a professional speaker. And with that, thank you. I hope to hear more from you. Back to you, General Evaluator. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the floor, some of you may not know that Seki is actually my brother. Yay. He wasn't a dynamic speaker from young. And as he joined Toastmasters, he has overtaken me in rank and in ribbons 
and I always enjoy his evaluations now. He has been clubbing like crazy and that gives him that experience and that diversity to actually deliver his evaluation speeches or even his other speeches to say. So, thank you for that dynamic evaluation. Sharon, I love that speech of yours just now because it was very personal. Not because you kept mentioning me and my son, but yes, it did bring back a lot of personal stories. My brother and I used to catch tadpoles and longkang fish. We used to build houses with sofa pillows and tablecloths. I used to ring neighbors' doorbells and run with him in tow and got him into trouble. But those were fun days. Tonight, I'm going to get out the mattress and the hangers and use that as a boat for my son. I want him to climb trees. There was a day yesterday, if I may, please indulge me. Yesterday, he came back from school and the teacher said, someone beat his hand. I asked him, who beat your hand? Yeah. Keith bite me. Why did Keith bite you? Do you know? No, must be something. What did you do to Keith? I pulled his chair. It was my son who aggravated it, not the other way around, yeah? So keep biting him was retaliation. So I say, good for you, you deserve it. <laughs> my brother and I grew up over with uh, dinner conversations. And I can tell you safely that my family is so closely bonded. I know everything of my dad's work life, uh, the stress that my mom goes through in the day uh, as a housewife at home. Uh, our school days, our exam days, our friends, our not so close friends. But yes, thank you very much, Sharon. It was a very personal thing to me as I sat there listening to you. For that 15 to 20 minutes, it was really enjoyable. So keep it up. Thank you.